Okay, guys. Hey, everyone. We're going to be doing um, our Money Monday, Money Monday interview, and I'm going to introduce to you a really um, creative and awesome local mom. She's also an um, upcoming author. Her name's Megan Fowler, and she has some great insight that I was super, 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 super excited to share about. Sorry, I'm so excited that I'm stumbling over everything I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the questions. So the first question is, oh, I guess I should say, hey, Megan, how are you? Thanks for getting on the call. <laughs> hey, Mary. Okay, Thanks so now we'll start with the questions. <laughs> just launch right in. Yeah, I don't, I don't do any introduction, just, hey. Okay, so how did you learn about money? Yeah, um, I was uh, admittedly pretty financially illiterate. Um, just to start off with, and I didn't learn about money um, until I want to say about maybe five years ago, five or six years ago is when I really started um, figuring things out. Um, and when I say I was financially illiterate, I mean, I did not understand what credit meant and I did not understand what interest meant. Now, looking back at that, that seems absurd. It seems so basic, but nobody really taught me what the, what the concept of interest, compounding interest was. And I got myself into some really bad debt, <laughs> the worst credit you could imagine. Um, really was in, in some deep spots several times in my young adulthood. And um, after... Um, after a divorce, which I'll talk about probably a little later, um, I started from scratch all over again, um, more in debt than when I had entered that marriage. Um, and it, that was the first time it, I realized what interest was because the debts that I had when I entered that marriage, I relinquished all control of my finances to someone else. And I guess automatic payments were just going to the minimum. And so the interest was just digging a deeper and deeper trench and seeing those numbers and seeing that change of just over a few years and having the light bulb click of, Oh, that's what debt and interest means. <laughs> and, uh, and heard right about this time, um, soon, soon after the divorce, um, some people in this group may know my love story where I reconnected with, uh, my old, soulmate and uh, we were dating for a second time around and uh, I picked up the book for our work week uh, by Tim Ferriss which my um, which Jeremy he's now my husband uh, he had read a few years before that and it was the first time that the concept of financial independence had ever occurred to me even though it's not necessary well I guess that book is about that it doesn't even I don't think he even uses that word necessarily but the main concept that he's drilling in that book is auto, you know, putting everything on autopilot, um, your work, your money, everything. Oh my gosh. Little Enzo is so cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> <He had himself. laughs> um, so anyway, that was the first time it occurred to me and all about the same time my husband or at that point boyfriend took me to Nicaragua and gave me the most amazing two weeks of my life and then towards the end wisely proposed to me <laughs> and uh and right after the proposal was basically like do you want this for the rest of your life um if so we need to you know get financially independent and we can have this you know perfect two weeks for the rest of your life. And that was the beginning of our shared vision, which is really, really important uh, for getting couples on board. And um, so that was, that was the beginning of when I started learning about money. And we sat down and we hashed out this vision and we looked at finances. No one had ever done this with me before in my life. And here's my little baby crawling up. <laughs> and, um, you know, went over what debts I had and what the interest rates were, something I never even looked at. I didn't really understand to know to look at that. Um, and we started tackling the things with the highest interest first. All right, I'm going to push the screen up here because I'm a multitasking mom over here. I had a feeling that she would come. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come begging for food. Um, Sorry, 
One moment. <laughs> Yes, yes, I can. I can probably um, jump to the next question too. So, because it sounds like you're about to go into what I'm about to ask next is, uh, so what were some of your financial goals together that maybe created this joint vision that you talked about? Yeah, um, we the the big vision was we wanted to go and live in Nicaragua or Costa Rica, but at that point in time it was um, Nicaragua because the political issues hadn't risen then. But um, we we were dead set on that. We had the area picked out, and we really like crafted that vision of what our house would look like. It's going to look like a little Swiss Family Robinson treehouse, <laughs> um, and we were just so excited. And then we also just didn't really know how to get from here to there, but we just knew that getting completely out of debt had to be the first step. And so. Um, that was really the first marker and it was like, you know what, we'll figure out everything else after we get out of debt. Um, and so what we did, the very first thing we did was we sold my car because I had a nice, not that it was like a brand new car or anything. It was probably like a 2005 or something like that. Um, but it was a nice little Toyota Solara and it had maybe like, I can't remember the payments for probably about 300 bucks a month. And because of the way the loan was structured, it required me to have the highest uh, type of insurance on the car that was available. And so I was paying a pretty hefty price on top of the car payments to pay for the insurance. And uh, Jeremy looked at that and was like, oh, no, 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 this has got to go. <laughs> this cannot be just flying out the window every single month. And he said something that changed my life. Uh, as far as looking at debt, he said, and at that point, I had just gotten a new job. Um, I was director of digital marketing for a cybersecurity a company, and I was making the most money I'd ever made, and I was really proud of it. I had just made a huge leap, and I, my natural inclination was to like treat myself after every paycheck to like show for the hard work I did. Hold on, baby, and. Um, and I definitely was in the consumerist trap and mindset. And he stopped me and said, this is not your money. And I'm like, what do you mean this isn't my money? He said, this is somebody else's money. This money belongs to this bank. This money belongs to this loan. This money belongs to this company. And I mean, he was like, this is not your money anymore. Every single cent that you're getting from these nice paychecks is not yours. It's theirs. You know, and it just kind of blew my mind of, I'm not allowed to even spend this money because it's not mine. It belongs to them now. And it really, really changed everything for me. And um, so uh, we, he had the smaller paycheck at that time. And so we decided to live off of his paycheck. That would be our living money. And then all of this, you know, so-called nice money I was making basically didn't exist in, in a sense to me anymore. It was purely for getting out of debt. And so um, we tackled, we got rid of that car, we got a used car for $4,000, got the lowest insurance possible, it's about $50 a month. And so that's all my car now cost me. It's like a 1997 with 350,000 miles on it. It's amazing. <laughs> but, um, you know, I went down some levels as far as like the way a car looks, but there's a lot more freedom because of that. And, um, that was a, a big thing. And then we tackled all of these debts, highest interest to the lowest interest until we were completely out uh, and got rid of his too. And um, then he had a house um, that he decided to do long-term rental with. And so that was basically paying its own mortgage, which was amazing. And then we got completely out of debt and thank goodness, because a crisis happened, and now we've gone through two financial crises, um, the most recent one being the past few months with the pandemic. But uh, thank goodness that we were debt-free, because right as we, everything happened all at once, we got married, we, like, next weekend came to St. Augustine, picked out our, our new apartment, packed up our stuff. The next week, we were traveling across the country, coming here, and in that same week, he broke his ankle. And like a few weeks before this, I had quit my job, that nice paying job. I had just quit it. <laughs> and, um, and so now all of a sudden he broke his ankle. He's a mechanic. He couldn't work. 
And so, and we were doing this huge move, just got married. I'm three months pregnant. It was kind of a disaster, but we coasted. <laughs> um, and I was, I had just a few little contract freelance jobs. I've just brought in like the smallest trickle of money, just enough to like barely cover rent and, and like meager groceries. And we had three months waiting for his ankle to heal. And we just eased by. And that was one of those first moments of, I cannot imagine if I was still in debt and still owed all these people this money. So thank goodness all we had to do was, you know, pay for some groceries and our rent. And so that was great. And so to um, bring it more recent times, we started from like $200 in the green. And in the past four years, um, have done leagues by learning how to invest and grow our money. And now I think we're like something like 479 days from declaring financial independence. Like it's that exact at this point. Um, and the, the way we did that was a mix of long-term rental. Um, we got a short-term rental. We saved and saved and saved. Um, we uh, only lived off of 25% of his income. So we saved 75% of our income in order to get that uh, little beach condo here and have vacation rental, that's creating money. And then we started learning about stocks late 2018. And now we've got a pretty good sum invested in the stock market with index funds, ETFs, and um, a couple other things. And then now I'm also about to publish two books. And so that will also be passive income um, if it's successful. So um, we've got several different routes of passive income that will pay for us to live in Costa Rica or Nicaragua. Uh, which is much cheaper to live there. So we don't need as much. So that's kind of the, that's the plan. Sorry if that was really long. No, that's, to good. Show you. that's good. I think it's um, the next question that I feel led to ask is, so pretty much it sounds like you have, well, for one thing, you've made an, a very clear written plan or, you know, some kind of plan of how things are going to go about your life um, over the next few years. So I would, I think I have an idea of what your answer is going to be to the next question, but I still want to um, see what you would say. But so for someone that's just starting out on their financial independence journey, maybe they're severely in debt and they say, okay, I've just had enough of this. Where do you feel like that's, where do you feel like they should start? Definitely think looking at the highest interest um, is, is the best way. I know um, I, I've read De Dave Ramsey's books. I like what he has to say. I think he has, I mean, obviously he's helped millions of people out and it's wonderful. But the one tweak that I would make is he says to go after low interest first, um, more for like the psychology of the, the satisfaction or the gratification of uh, paying off a debt um, just so that you keep going. And so I do understand that. Um, but mathematically, that high interest one is killing you. It's just burying you faster and faster. Um, so I think... Um, in our case, at least, it was wise to start tackling the ones that were burying us in quicksand. Um, so doing that, and then also reevaluate literally every single thing in your life. Um, that everything costs us money, but there is a cheaper way to do literally everything. <laughs> I mean, just the, the what a month ago, I figured out how to make laundry detergent, and it's like a dollar for an insane amount of laundry detergent if you just do it by hand. Um, and you know, it may not be as good a quality as Tide or something, but it's worth it in order to keep um, saving money that can now grow in an investment. Yeah. Um, so literally every, everything can be done cheaper than what you're doing. Right. And I think that, I mean, that it, maybe, maybe laundry detergent isn't for everyone, but there, maybe there's something that you can cut down on it's just the principle of saying, okay, there's maybe something I can cut down on that is possible to be less, you know? So cool. Um, so I really also wanted to talk about, I think not, let's see. What is something that you feel needs to change in our society? <laughs> She's like, oh my God. <laughs> So what is something you think needs to change in our society in order for this to get better? Um, to me, it's the education, education for everyone, but especially women. Um, I feel like 
I don't know what's happening culturally or socially. I think it's been happening for ages, centuries. Uh, but it starts early, probably as early as pre-K or kindergarten or something. But men are taught that they are better at math, engineering, science, any of those STEM uh, categories, technology. Um, they're just kind of pushed in that direction and they're given the confidence that they need that they can figure that out or that they know it. But even if they're not good at it, they are more confident at it than uh, women. And something is instilled in us that we are um, less good at math. And it's not true. I know I made straight A's. I was an AP student um, in honors and gifted education classes, making A's in very difficult math classes. But I believed that I was bad at math. If you ask me, and I, I still, I try not to say it now, but I'll be like, oh, I'm not good at math. You know, and it's just not true. And I don't know why we're thought we're taught that and so it also directly correlates to money so we think we're not good at math and so we think we're not good at money and the men and culturally i know in my case my dad handled all the finances and and so uh, he bailed me out of a lot of bad situations thank you dad if you ever end up seeing this but <laughs> um i also regret that um, I wasn't taught, you know, rather than just like handling it for me, doing my taxes for me, uh, handling the credit card situation for me, um, letting me learn um, as I was growing up. I just, I wasn't taught anything. And, um, and so I, I wish, you know, if there's any men watching this video in your group, um, if you are the man of the house and you're handling all the finances, please involve your wife uh, in the finances. Um, she doesn't, you know, have to press the buttons to, you know, pay anything, but like just involve her. Um, I know in my first marriage, um, that same thing happened that, you know, I grew up with my dad handling all the finances. I ended up marrying somebody who worked for a large financial company. And here I was a poor little girl with bad credit and, you know, barely scraping by. And he told me you're bad at money. I'll handle the money. And, I, and because it stressed me out because I wasn't good at money and it was a stressful thing for me, I said, great, you handle the money. I don't even know about it. And so all of my paychecks direct deposited into some joint account that I never saw and handled the mortgage and handled all these things. Um, and a, a small, very small percentage went into my personal account with my personal debit card to handle gas and lunches, and maybe a little trinket here and there. And uh, I had no idea what was happening with my money. And so once that marriage fell apart, I had absolutely nothing to show for years and years of having a career. Um, and, and, and I don't blame him necessarily because a lot of that's my fault. I should have taken charge. I should have asked to have been involved and I should have asked to learn. Uh, I should have asked to see how much was being paid on my student loans at that point. Um, but I didn't. Um, and so uh, I, I learned a hard lesson that way. And now I am very involved, uh, second marriage here. And we, we are on the same page. We talk about it constantly. Um, anyway, to get back to your question, I think this is a huge issue for women um, that this financial literacy needs to be taught and the confidence that we can have in ourselves and the capability to learn. Because it's just a, it's just learning. It, 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 you're not, no one's born knowing about money. Yeah. And it's a very learnable thing. <laughs> yeah. And I think what's really cool about women is that if we want something, we go out and get it. Like there's no stopping this. So right. I think it's important for us, um, you know, as women and as, as husbands or whoever is in your life, that's a woman and they say, okay, I kind of want to learn about this. Like encourage it, say, go do it. Like you can, there's books to read. There's people to contact, you know, be able to have the courage to be able to do that. Um, okay, I'll ask one more question. Let's see. So I guess this is, I guess you already answered that when you plan to retire. So like not retire, but be financially independent would be in a roundabout yeah. 400 days or something. Yeah, we actually have it written down every single day. We hand wrote it on the calendar. So we celebrate it with our coffee every morning. We're like, woo, 479 days, yeah. And we got a little countdown tracker on one of our computers. Um, and when we started, my husband said, I want to be retired by age 42. And I thought that was really random because it's not like a round number. And I was just like, why 42? But 
uh, but we're going to do it. <laughs> so, um, cool. Yeah. So and early 42. <laughs> I do want to say early retirement does not mean like when people hear the word retirement, they picture like, uh, you know, hanging out in a retirement community in Florida by the pool, sipping a cocktail or sitting in a lazy boy watching TV, you know, like that's not retirement to us. For us, it means we no longer have to rely on a, a paycheck from someone else. We don't have to have a boss that we rely on uh, to clock in and clock out. And we can now pursue things that interest us that will probably bring in money. We will still be working. We will probably be man managing more rental properties. We want cabinas. We want to build cabinas in Costa Rica and rent them out. I want to be writing these books. I want to be illustrating. He wants to be doing woodworking. And these are all things that we could probably make more income from, but it'll be passion projects. And, you know, that's what early retirement means to us anyway. Perfect. Yeah. I, was, I know we had spoken in the past, like, I think some of my goals are, you know, they look different than your goals. And so it was kind of hard for me to understand that my kids are literally wrecking things as I watch them. <laughs> ah, so, um, so some, some of my goals, I think initially were like, okay, I want this big house. I want, a, you know, I want this, I want that. And that's still the, my consumer mindset, you know? And I think what needs to change in my family is I hope one day, soon like in the next 12 years to be able to retire my husband you know because i don't want him to feel obligated to be ruled by someone else dictates like it dictates his life completely so i think that is where i feel is gonna that's one of our massive goals because vincenzo probably feels the same way if he ever watches this but um and I think 12 years is very realistic. I'm in a lot of um, financial independence um, or FIRE movement. Um, FIRE stands for financial independence, retire early. I'm in a lot of groups for that. And 10 years is a very realistic and achievable and common timeline. Um, so, and I think we're doing it in like six or seven, if you count from like the moment we sat down and said, let's get out of debt. Um, so, and we've been extremely aggressive. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really cool too, because I was talking to, yes, I was talking to Vincenzo last night about it. And I was like, if you can just like suffer under the rule of someone else for 12 years, I promise we can get out and we can be done. Cause I, I know you had mentioned like, let's live like no one else so we can live like no one else. And I think that that's really important for for my, for Vincenzo to understand as well like if you can just sort of suffer so to speak for the next 12 years like that is going to be we'll be able to fix it well we can get out of this and 12 years especially if you have kids you know 12 years goes super fast so it's not lunchtime yet so <laughs> my kids are <laughs> I gave um I know I gave this example to you but you know we we um live in a duplex Oops. Unlimited minute. Okay, sorry. I just saw a little pop up here. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I thought our meeting <laughs> just <laughs> off. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, we live in a duplex and it's got a little ch ugly chain link fence on one side that I hate. And it's a kind of a, like, you know, scuzzy little, I don't know, 1970s place. It's not nice. Um, builder cabinet seems like fake plastic countertops. It's, it's not a nice place. Um, and you know, I'm driving this 1995 vehicle, um, and this beautiful blouse, I love it. I got it for $2 from Goodwill, <laughs> you know, I, I used to wear ridiculously high end designer boutique clothes and, um, but it's, it's totally worth it. it. It's not a big deal. And I've read a lot of books that helped me get over the consumerist mindset to understand the marketing and the big business that's like just drilling at us and brainwashing us. Um, and also like in, I've studied influencer marketing to understand like the effects that scrolling through Instagram and Pinterest has on me. I still do it, but like now that I'm more mindful of like the tactics and what's happening, I'm not susceptible to it like I used to be. Um, so I just, it's worth this suffering um, 
in order to save to have the financial independence. But then once you get used to this and you realize you can still have a beautiful Ann Taylor loft blouse for $2 that no one ever wore and it still had the tags on it, you know, I, I, it changes your living expenses. So now we get to retire early, earlier because we know that it doesn't cost us very much to live. It's not like we're trying to hoard money and retire so that then we can live this luxurious lifestyle on a yacht, you know, in a mansion on the beach uh, with a brand new Lexus or something. Um, it, now that we've worked through all the mental stuff to stop wanting all these pretty things, um, we've learned that we can make a lot of these things, find, find a lot of these things secondhand, or that we just outright don't need them at all and have lost that um, weird consumerist drive. Um, so I'm pretty stoked to go live in a tree house in Costa Rica and like <laughs> no air conditioning and mosquito nets. <laughs> yeah, that only sounds fun. I mean, that does not sound fun to me, but you know, we all, <laughs> we all have different ideas of uh, life, living life, you know, so. That doesn't sound uh, glamorous to you. <laughs> no, I like air conditioning. You know, and I don't like mosquitoes, so I'll stick to my air conditioned house. But um, thank you so much, Megan. I am so grateful for your knowledge and your insight, and I'm looking forward to hearing more. Also, be sure to post your anything you want into the comments, maybe your podcast or any information that you have coming out about your book, because I know that others will want to hear about it. So yeah, um, I'll drop in uh, my website. I have a book coming out about minimalism a book coming out about the fire movement and what precisely we did um, over the past few years. And um, also I've got a blog coming out that has my favorite books on this topic and my favorite podcasts on this topic. So I'll drop that. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Well, see you. See you soon. Right. See you soon, Mary. Bye. <laughs>